<laughs> so um uh this is Moni. We are having the uh mental health podcast and we have Dylan Dodds. Hi. I thought it's Dylan Dogs. He said no, it's Dylan Dodds. Yes, with a lot of D's. <laughs> D-O-D-D. D-O-D-D. Dodd. Yeah, like Dodd. Okay, so but with an S. It's like dad, but it was old. Yeah. So you could say that. Um, how's your dad? <laughs> how's my dad? Yeah. Uh, Do you have a good dad? Do you uh, recommend? What a deep question. Yeah, I like my dad is a very stern man uh -huh. who um is Australian. Uh huh. Actually, and he uh, but he came over here and he he had a couple of you know immigrants coming over here. Yeah, so yeah, he had a job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the joke's on him because he had kids and now he can't leave. <laughs> so um. So yeah, he's a stern man, but he like you know doesn't suffer fools gladly. Which mm -hmm. is unfortunate because I'm a fool. You are a fool. So um, yeah, it can be strange at times, but you know it's no, it's nice. I, I like that we have a very a lot of people are like a, can I think let having a slightly strange relationship with your father get to you, but I very I like that he set a really good example. I think it's quite a good example of let's just you know keep each other at arms. Know, arm's length and like you know no one wants to go through life wasting time spending time with someone who they don't want uh-huh but we're there if we i know that he's there if i uh-huh right now uh, uh, yeah yeah and uh, and so well a shorter question yeah uh do you think you had a good childhood were you a happy child yeah i mean i'm one of those communities who's mad privileged uh, uh -huh. Together, although I mean, whether that was a benefit or a, or a negative is, is to be said. Oh, I'm fine, maybe in a minute. Um, I'm trying to cut down on the old strep sores. Um, so, and then, yeah, they, you know, worked their way up. Okay. Grew up in a housing boom. Um, so, we're, 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 we're okay. We're doing, they're doing fine. I, I, I was a little bit surprised when you said mad privilege because, like, I feel impressive because normally, especially men, it's very hard to make them understand they have privilege, and um, uh, that you have the awareness is already very ahead. Yeah. That's, that's right. I'm, I'm great, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. No, he's all right. He's all right. <laughs> and uh, what do you do at the fringe? Well, I'm doing my my second solo show at the moment. Which is a silly fun show where we get stuck in. Well, I mean, it's sort of pitched as a silly fun show where we get mm. stuck in a time loop and have to escape the time loop. Um, but I mean, this is probably a good avenue to say that it, it turns out that the, the time loop is actually kind of representing my experience within the pandemic, which wasn't mm. ideal because we, we chose that moment to have our first child. So, <gasps> wow. that's, that's sort of the root. I mean, I'm not saying I'm blaming my kids for my poor mental health. No, I'm not. How uh, many you have? Now we've had two. This is like directly spoiling the end of my show, but don't worry. Okay, and um, uh, your show is like a stand-up? Is a... yeah, so it's it's a it's a stand-up show with slightly theatrical flourishes mm -hmm. because I'm privileged, so I like to <laughs> you know, do something wanky with it. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, so this is still theatrical flourishes, but yeah, Dylan Dodds Ground Dodds Day. That was it. like mm -hmm. when I re when I realized I could call it Ground Dodds Day, I was like, yeah, that's that's. So good, so good. Yeah. Do you, do you feel you you can be a good parent? Do you feel you can be better than your parent? Oh yeah, I mean that's like, that's honestly there's gonna there could be a whole hour of me exploring that in like another show about mm. that, um, because I don't really go fully into it, and it's very very complex, and you do mm. change a lot when when you become a parent, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> yeah, that is definitely a root of. of a lot of my neg negative um, of, of worry and trying to become what sort of parent you want you want to be. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, it's interesting because I think my dad is is quite a good example, but he's also the only example I have. Yeah. And my wife is not shy about saying that he's actually not a great example. Mm -hmm. um, so it's sort of like, how can I take kind of the good parts of his parenting mm -hmm. and then um, add in some other bits of, that are more me like trying to be more fun uh -huh. but not quite 
maintaining it because of my crippling smartphone addiction. But you know, Your what <laughs> addiction? My smartphone addiction. Oh wow. Um, so yeah, how do you, you know? And uh, what? Well, well, if there's one thing you say, um, you do better than your parents, and no matter what, you will make sure you you do that. What is that? I I don't think I can do anything better than my parents. Really? I think. You think you had it the best? No, I don't think I don't think they had it the I had it the best. I just don't think I can achieve、mm-hmm. the level of my father's success. That's、uh, like you know that's. A, a but part of it. you mean success in career or in parenting? Well, in career, I guess、mm-hmm. not so. So then, I, yeah, I suppose that is the way I could exceed him. Yeah, because if I can become a better parent somehow. Yeah, because. Because for for a child, they don't care as long as you are not starving. For them, like, it's really about being there. Yeah, exactly.、Mm. They just want me to be around,、mm-hmm. but I just want to be off doing comedy. <laughs> so that's, that's,、oh, wow. that's a challenge. Okay, okay. So, so what's your mental health challenges? So, the 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 main crux of it, I always struggle a little bit. A lot, you know, but I think I was like probably masking a quite like、uh, up and down personality throughout uni and drinking a lot. But it's fine. I learned to cope, and you know, and doing comedy I, I think really helped at first.、Mm-hmm. Uh, weirdly, I was talking to someone about this the other day. In terms of alcoholism, like there's two types of comics. There's comics who, when they start like comedy, their alcoholism gets way worse. Yeah. But a lot of people, I think, like like me, who you know, you rapidly learn that if you're drinking before a show, you just want to be gone, right? Yeah. So I, I learned that pretty quick, and I want to be good at it, like you know, I want to be a good comedian. So I don't drink before I go on now. Sorry, I'm really, I'm not cool. I'm not one of those cool comedians who drinks before they go on. Yeah, but but it also depends. Like if you are doing a one a.m. show, you have to drink a bit because、oh, yeah. the crowd is like <laughs> you are not in the same mental level. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So then it's kind of helped me to not drink too much in a way. But then also like I mean, I, I haven't been drinking this year both for mental health and then to make sure my show is as good as possible. So. Wow. But I am gonna drink in the last week of the fringe. So come talk to me in two weeks. And see, <laughs> see how like drunk I am then. So short, But, short, short answer. What's your biggest mental health challenge? So when I had the ch- the, the the child,、uh, the first child, because of the pandemic, there was a series of events which、uh, culminated very stressful events.、Mm-hmm. Personally, when my wife was very pregnant, she got very.、Uh, Covidy. <laughs> I, I, gave, I gave her COVID, and then we had a very scary couple of weeks.、Um, mm. But the, like she, but she was fine. But that was obviously quite. So your baby is a COVID <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but、oh. I mean the, the the baby's fine. But the it was very traumatic for both of us. And then a couple of weeks later, I went and donated blood plasma. You know, I mean, you can tell I'm already like talking a bit weird because、mm-hmm. of the effect that、uh, I went and donated. Blood plasma, and I had what at the time was described as a bad reaction to the anticoagulant, which left me、uh, shaking uncontrollably for like two hours in this chair, like like King Charles with a pen. And I was very, I was very close to hugging both of this person. I was, and I was, you know, stuck and couldn't make it home.、Uh, I made it home, and then we were watching a film a couple of weeks later, where someone、uh, in the film is struggling with a newborn baby, and I suddenly felt like really like. Faint for a moment, and I could use to lie down, sort of wanted to lie down on the floor. But because of the donating the plasma thing,、uh-huh. I thought it was. I couldn't connect in my brain. Oh, maybe it's like the, the being worried about bringing a child to a world that's burning. So, I assumed that they'd kind of like changed me by when they put the anticoagulant in me. What's anticoag? It's just like a thing. If you donate like blood plasma, they just put. What's like, blood、injection. plasma? Uh, blood plasma is a part of your blood, and they were basically looking for、uh, like an antibody way to cure it. It was before the vaccine, so. Oh, okay, okay. They tried to、yeah. get some samples and try to work it out. Yeah, it was like yeah, taking、mm-hmm. antibodies from people who had natural antibodies,、mm-hmm. okay. like me, because I'm、mm-hmm. great at surviving deadly diseases. <laughs>、uh, don't don't test that by coughing on me, please. <laughs> But、um, 
so yeah, so I as I, I was lying on the floor and then were, like freaking out basically, mm-hmm. and just had like a really long series of panic attacks mm-hmm. that like would really end wow. where I was yeah I've hyperventilated and um, thing is when you hyperventilate. Mm-hmm. Um, you get like ex- like loads of extra oxygen to your brain, which just makes the panic way worse. Really? Yes, because all of yeah the extra oxygen makes you freak out. Wow. And then, th- and then part of the problem was because I was freaking out, I was like, we need to ring one 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 and find like, find out what they've done to me. So we rang one one one, and then through the questions that we answered them, they were like, oh yeah, he might have had a heart attack. Bring him in. So that obviously didn't help the panic. <laughs> and then we went into A and E, and I got there, and they were like, yeah, you're, we think you're fine. Just you know. Nothing showing up on the tests, mm-hmm. so you've just freaked out basically. Mm-hmm. But I didn't have any understanding of it for like six months, right? How did you find that out? And then, well, so um, I can't remember when, but at some point, a medical professional said that it was it was this thing called panic out of the blue, which basically just meant that. So then, for like the next two, three years, I will just like randomly feel like really strong panic mm-hmm. and through therapy I don't get panic attacks now but I do still get like often one of the things that kind of like weirdly no- knowing it helps me keep on top of it is I noticed that it's very linked to, to caffeine and if I have a coffee then there's an almost guaranteed drop off like four or five hours later after, wow. after the coffee where I'll suddenly feel like an, an element of panic wow. and putting that together has helped a lot because now I can eventually came to the understanding of oh no it is you know panic and tension but but dealing with the aftermath it was kind of worse in a way because then a few weeks later we had the baby and it had to go through a very long period of sorry I don't know if this is supposed to be funny or not <laughs> a very long period of um, this sleep deprivation yeah of course while having the baby Wow. Which made me really worse and just uh, like gave me a, a really heavy anxiety depression swings for a long time and uh, lots of like in, intrusive, like self violent thoughts um, and some violent to other people's thoughts, which was quite very unpleasant. But were you enjoying it? The, the, I mean, not the panic attack, <laughs> but. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> but the. the, but the um, uh, the parenting part to have this little thing. Well, that's part of. I mean, that's part of the trauma. I mean, I have to say, love that. that I, I don't. Apparently, I, I no, not not even apparently. I don't say this enough in the show uh-huh. that I, I do love my children, obviously. Uh-huh. Um, and it's nice to have uh, had a second go. Yeah, to make try and re-experience it again. Without yeah, being... wait a moment, Mihai, uh, join us now. Uh, don't move. Let me give you the camera. Whoa. Yeah, this is Mihai, and he came here to pick up the key card. Do you want to eat food? What with me tonight? Uh, what time? Like uh, after this? Okay, we have to make good love at seven thirty. Why? So we can go watch shows. Okay, okay. But the, no, it's Six twelve then. Okay, okay. Yeah, but we just started. Ah, okay. Yeah, then we count it together. Okay. Then bye bye. Okay, yeah. 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 Ah, you know yeah. each other. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. But, uh, you are, I think, at comedy mastermind. So. Yeah, that was a really fun concept. I enjoyed that a lot. Okay, okay, uh. that's good. I, I can't, I can't remember exactly what day was that, but. Uh, Nobody yeah. remembers which day is yeah, which yeah. day anymore. It's the day 10 at uh, Edinburgh yeah, French. Okay. That's, yeah. that's why my show is about doing the same thing every, yeah, day, yeah. every day, yeah, so yeah. over and over again. Yeah. So you said that you have a second goal? Uh, uh, we had a... Can I take the vape or do you need it? Uh, you can have it. Yeah. Huh. This is just someone telling you their life story at this point. Okay. Uh, we had yeah, a, it is, it's a podcast. We had a... Bo- yeah, that's true. We had a... <laughs> we had a... Um, a boy the second time around and yeah by by th- then i had enough understanding of my own thing that i could make sure i approached it and also an understanding of how hard it is having a baby that i essentially went into training for it and you know like stopped stopped drinking for that for that year um 
which did help, which is a shame because I love drinking. <laughs> but, you know, at the end of the day, mm-hmm. you, if you want to look after yourself, you've got you to sleep and you've got to not fuck with your brain chemistry too much, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and, yeah, it was reasonably cathartic to have a second go and be able to enjoy it in a way that I couldn't. But in other ways, it did also prolong my suffering. <laughs> but in, in this... In this case, do you feel you love the second child more? <laughs> wow, that is a good question. That is such a hard question. Because question. you have such way better experience with the second one. In a, I think there's a real feeling for me that me and the first child got through it together. <laughs> and w- when I finally was able to find those moments of peace like sort of like eight nine months in where we would just go for a, a, a long walk and really just appreciate the scenery and all these things that actually is like when I look back at the pandemic it's the Russians I don't know if they can hear that or not what's going on just the jet is the one going to end <laughs> Where is it? Must be above the clouds, like a super sun. Really? Amazing. We're being buzzed by the Russians. Wow. Um, Let's wait. Do you think where is it? Where the sound is? Why it's really long? Okay, it's gone. It's gone. Wow, that's scary. Come back here. That was such a good question as well. Now, so, yeah, yeah, do you so, love the second one more? Yeah. No, I mean, one, I'm being recorded, so I would never express a preference for <laughs> But also, um, no, I think me and the, me and the, there is a, there's a lot of sadness, you know, within the whole family that we couldn't enjoy the first one as much as we had planned, because mm-hmm. we, you know, we conceived before the pandemic started. But, um, also we're very grateful. You know, like, like I said, privileged. You know, uh-huh. we've, got, we've got two happy, healthy children. So uh-huh. a lot of people had a worse time than, than us in the, in the pandemic. Yeah. Um, but part of why I'm talking about it in my show is because people should kind of feel like able to talk about having a terrible time in the pandemic and didn't, didn't get, didn't have, mm-hmm. which isn't funny, but it's true. That's, that's the one true point you get at the end of the show. Sorry, it's not always. Uh, and the with uh, with the an- anxiety attacks. Um, I think it's very important for people to recognize when it happens because once you know what it is, you can start to learn how to cope with it. And how does a panic attack feel like? um, That's a good question. I mean, again, learning your triggers helps it. So, because mine is all, is largely related around uh, Worrying that I might have a heart attack. <laughs> so, <laughs> so any sort of pain in my left arm or my chest area. So you are hypochondriac. Yeah, I suppose you could say that. Yeah. Then you can be a good friend of me. Hi. Yeah. He thinks he has a different cancer every day. Yeah. Well, weirdly, what it, one of the things that kind of helped is my wife is a massive hypochondriac, but we're hypochondriac about different things. <laughs> So I'm very much just like, oh my god, my heart, <laughs> and she's the cancer one. So you balance it out. Okay. Um, and I think, I, from speaking to other people, I think it, it's actually, I think, quite common for new prospective parents, particularly fathers, to have this sort of thing happen, where, you know, you can become more conscious of your own mortality. But for me, it, you know, I had all this extra stuff going on from the, pan, from the pandemic. And also, because I'd gone from a quite a high intensity career of doing stand up, you know, three nights a week of a lot of adrenaline, to not having any outlet for that adrenaline. So mm-hmm. that also kind of had all built up and okay. turned into, you know, like my body metabolizing stress. Mm. Which is a shame because it does mean now I need to carry on doing comedy forever because mm-hmm. I can never feel normal again unless I let that out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, the, the question, the next question is. Um, how, what did you get you into comedy? Uh, that's a good question. Can I, oh yeah, 
I'll, I'll, I'll save some stories. Um, how did I get into comedy? Yeah. From the Edinburgh Fringe. I came up here when I was an 18 year old and I spent a whole week trying to get off with someone and then on the mega bus on the way home a comedian started passing her notes and then they got off together and on that day I saw that I would one day become funny enough mm -hmm. that we would be together no, um, <laughs> I no I just love I mean partly that but also I just love watching all the com comedians and the whole world of creativity and it's like hey I feel like I could do this and you know went home watched loads on TV and a woman was your first uh, mic my first mic I mean I don't want to give away <laughs> how long how old I am but it's actually 10 years this year. Mm -hmm. I did a gig in 2014. Mm -hmm. And then never really looked back. It took me a while to get going. I was pretty slow at the start because I think at the end of the day, you know, it should be fun. So mm -hmm. if you want to start comedy, like enjoy it for as long as possible mm -hmm. and keep going for as long as you enjoy it. And that's why yeah. I'm still going because it's still fun. Yeah. And uh, I forgot to ask like, uh, uh, you talk about your panic attacks, the stress to yes. become a new parent. Yeah. How? How's your wife coping? How's she doing? I mean, she has honestly been incre incredible, really, you know, because she had to, well, I don't want to say look after me, because she didn't really, like, she prioritized the baby, which is the right thing to do. Um, but, you know, she, she stuck with me and helped. I don't think I would have probably been able to get back as close to normality as I have. So you, if she was do, she was the one produced the baby, and then she was the one more mentally. Well, stable. also she had about, but I mean, it was a deeply traumatic event for her as as well, uh -huh. because you know she was about to give, and it did make the the, the, the birth more. Um, this is the thing I don't talk about my show, but I should talk about my show. Is it's actually like the additional stress put on her yeah. by me losing my mind ah. when she was about to give birth was horrific so, and she um you know but she was like well it's just another choice and just got, got through it all and mm -hmm. uh that's left a lot of uh, lasting damage on both of us uh -huh. I, I what i'm going to say i don't mean it okay i don't mean it so uh, uh given that um your your wife was carrying the baby. Yeah. She was on the mentally and the, and the physical stress, and she have to tell you get your shit together to to. So because of this, I think we can legitimately call you a pussy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll say that. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, she's. Uh... She has a bigger dick here. Oh yeah, no, that's uh, definitely true. My, uh, I mean. But that's that that thing is that was true before I went fully crazy, right? Like uh -huh. my wife, and th this is a bad example of her podcast, uh -huh. but she's very much like just get on with it, yeah. and actually kind of that sort of go getting like uh -huh. her, her motivational powers uh -huh. have like carried me throughout yeah. the last like six years <laughs> until. Uh, until I kind of lost it. I mean, people could debate as to whether that sort of uh -huh. pushing myself so hard might uh -huh. have contributed to my decline. Um, but I think also, you know, at the end of the day, you kind of get over it. Particularly, particularly with panic, it's very heavily rooted in fear. And uh -huh. um, it's really such a cliche, but like, the only way to get over it is to realise that the fear of the fear is what's kind of causing the feedback loop. Yeah, yeah. And I had, I'm quite lucky in that I had quite a good understanding of that from um, two different things. Mm -hmm. which, this is where it's going to get really heavy and not funny at all. Uh -huh. um, one, it's not f yeah. a funny podcast. Yes, that's yeah. good, that's good. It's a sad podcast about funny people. That's good, okay. Mm -hmm. um, is my uh, my little sister had uh, a, I don't know much I said, had a, uh, a few psychotic episodes in the pandemic, taking too many drugs, um, and uh, weirdly, through seeing her, has it 
gives me a better understanding of my own pitfalls. And she's she's doing much much better now, but yeah, she's one of the people who had a much harder time than me. Um, How many siblings you have? I got two sisters. Mm -hmm. Uh, my elder sisters also had. Def there's definitely an element of the, the mental illnesses running in, 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 the, in the family mm -hmm. uh, kind of thing. We've all suffered in, in, in different ways. And uh, uh, do you, as you said, you are not from a broken home. So, what do you, do you think is genetic or is something? I mean, maybe partly genetic, maybe partly our uh, family dynamic and just being kind of odd ones. Really know. I mean, it's just you know. I think overall, it's just base level that a lot of families have. Mm -hmm. But some of us have had, particularly me and my younger sister, have had specific kind of situations mm -hmm. that tip you over the edge, so to speak. Uh, is it okay to say your situation? Sorry. Is it okay to share what situation? Oh, so for me it was the well, the, the yeah. pandemic and the, yeah. the, the, the and did you have an anxiety attack before that? Uh, n not that I'm aware of, but I was probably quite a person who swung between being anxious and depressed without realizing. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, like glid over it by never really stopping. And that's why I struggled with the pandemic, because then it's like, oh hey, here's a situation where you have to learn to sit yeah, in yeah, a yeah. room. There's a great bit in the film Sound of Metal. Have you mm. seen Sound of Metal? No. It's really good, um, but it's about a drummer who has extreme hearing loss. Mm -hmm. And basically learns that it's going to come from how he deals with it. Mm -hmm. And there's a bit where a guy is like, you need to go in this room, take out a pad, and write on this pad everything in your head. So keep writing, keep writing until you can't write anymore. Keep writing until you feel comfortable sitting in the room without, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a real, yeah, you know, you, carrying on like a shark forever kind of works. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I had to try and learn to be comfortable sitting and not doing anything. And uh, for me, like, I can totally understand you. Like, uh, um, that's why I have seven projects a day at Edinburgh Fringe, okay? Um, but for me, it's very clearly, it's from my childhood. Um, we didn't have this kind of breaks. We, I never traveled. And uh, the breaks are because business are not doing good of my mom. It's not something that we choose. And it's always lots of worrying, no money, how to survive the break. So. And in China, the competition is so intense. You always need to be better, better, better. So also I was on the edge of survive for a decade. So I just don't know how to take breaks. And so I don't understand you if you are from a happy family and you have the privilege, you have siblings, you had a, a okay childhood, yeah. decent childhood. Um, but the, but I like, think, like, did your parents travel? Well, I think the ec um, you mean travel for like holidays? Yeah, like, did you have holidays? Oh, did you yeah, have breaks? Yeah. We had holidays, but then my mum is also like me in that she can't really s not be doing anything. Mm -hmm. She's the sort of person who always needs to have a um, uh, like a radio on to mm -hmm. kind of keep her occupied, mm -hmm. which. I don't know if that comes from her trying to combat intrusive thoughts and whether mm. she's got some sort of like underlying OCD thing that we've never discussed. Yeah. Um, but there's definitely that going on there with her that, uh, that I can kind of relate to more as I get older. But no, we, I mean, we had all those. But I think in terms of, but I think the economic back, back to the final thing is a huge amount of gold. Hi, I'm Dylan Dodds. You can see my show, Dylan Dodds Ground Dodds Day, <laughs> in the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. I don't know how soon this is going up. She's lost a bag. How are you?
we know what we can do it. We can get through. I've done a little. I've done a little message for the people at home. Uh, I'm I'm so so people here are so nice, and uh, I I lost I lost the. Uh, uh, I, uh, the the it is so windy. My bag, like plastic bag, shopping bag, got uh, flew away, and I started to chase it. It was so far away, and uh, another guy also started to chase it. <laughs> it was so funny. People here are so friendly. Yeah. Best city in the world. Yeah. What what are we were talking? We were talking about the the economics problem, yeah. problem in that like yeah. most, you know, um, I think mental health issues at the end as they have a huge root in like economic instability mm -hmm. obviously got some you know but what you struggle in china but yeah that was a big part of it so i mean for my sister mm -hmm. it kind of went went both ways where she's because of her mental health issues she's never mm -hmm. really been able to develop a career uh -huh. which has meant she hasn't had you know that mm -hmm. economic stability which yeah. made her mental health worse yeah and then for me you know once the pandemic hit Mm -hmm. I was suddenly in a situation where, oh, I'm about to have my my um, my first child. Mm -hmm. My my wife' uh, job can't exist in a pandemic. Uh huh. What does she do? She runs a musical theatre group for children. Oh yeah, so yeah. So that was gone. Mm -hmm. My um, and then it took her her like you know, free, and then also realizing oh she now has to look after a kid all the time so she can't work for soon. Mm -hmm. So as much as she did then as well, and then. I couldn't gig, so there's no money, and I couldn't do my, my other job I do on the side as well, mm -hmm. um, because that was for like making soft drinks for, oh. for bars and pubs. So okay. basically, you know, both of our income sources. What well, you are so what? specific? Your well, job is make soft drinks. Yes. Make uh, soft only drinks. soft drinks. <laughs> yes. <yeah. laughs> so what are soft drinks you make? Um, it was a company my friend started mm -hmm. called Square Root Soda. Check them out; they're very tasty. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was the money guy for that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, every day just confronted with the economic reality of, oh shit, our whole business that we've been working on for six years is, mm -hmm. is, is disappearing in front of our mm -hmm. eyes. And mm -hmm. amazingly, they got through it because, you know, there mm -hmm. was a lot of government support. And obviously, once that came in, mm -hmm. for me, that helped. But, but at the time of having, having the, you know, the, the breakdown, the panic, there was no, mm -hmm. there was no government being like, hey guys, it's all right, we're going to help you through this. Uh -huh. It was just, oh shit, well, what do I do now? This, Where did this, you... this could be six months of no uh, income for us, for our whole family. So, yeah, pretty, pretty bad. Where, uh, where are you based? I'm based in um, Hemel Hempstead. Where in, is in it? In Hertfordshire. It's by, what? it's by London. Do you know London? Yeah. <laughs> I know London. I was like, how can I ask the most patronizing question I can think of? <laughs> you know England, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, and, uh, I don't know Scotland. They, they nobody knows England. <laughs> yeah, these Scots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can't wait to get rid of this. So you right. normally gig in London? No, I normally gig in England, so like the south half of England, mm -hmm. anywhere that's two hours from my house or three okay. hours from my house. Mm -hmm. I'll go further for more money. It, it'll cost you, but uh, I'll go further. Uh huh. And uh, now, how you make a living? Now mm. I still do comedy, um, and. I still do music, and I also work for a charity mm -hmm. for a very depressing cause. Oh, uh, what's <laughs> so, the cause? Um, I'm not sure if I, uh, I'm not sure if I can say. Really, it's you can't? For, you want to say what do you work? It, it's for it's for um, victims of, of torture. Wow. Oh. So yeah, not good for either comedy. Mm -hmm. All the men have to be working there. No, I, I, uh, so let's not say the C word. Let's move on. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> Cut. Cut. Shh. Shh. Oh, charity. Shh. 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 I mean, give to charity. It's great to come charity. But don't do torture. That's bad. Oh. Um. Oh, that C word. Shh. Sorry. Shh. Okay. Um. So. Um. <laughs> Do you think work for a uh, um, charity for torture? Do you think it helps with your anxiety? Uh, no, because <laughs> you know you're constantly being confronted with um, the worst of human the worst of humankind, and yeah, and but I and there's that thing where people who work for, for charity are like kind of like you know doing it to make themselves feel good, 
Mm-hmm. And I guess it does a little bit make me feel good. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, mostly just because of the money. Mm-hmm. I'm in it for the money. <laughs> no, I mean, I like both of them. Uh-huh. And uh, another question. You answered it before. I'm going to get fired for this mm-hmm. podcast. <laughs> Nobody watched this. It's fine. Yeah. You didn't say anything bad. Yeah, that's good. Uh, um, and the uh, next question, you explained like the anxiety attack, but uh, it's really long. <laughs> so can you make it shorter? How did you realize? What's the symptom? Like, like oh, oh yeah, I is... didn't really, yeah, I didn't really finish that. So basically, like if if a uh, like a pain in my chest or arm from anything mm. will happen, you start just going down that 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 route of like oh sh- shit, my am I having a heart attack? Um, and then you start, but you just become immediately like hyper aware of all of your bodily uh-huh. sensations, even like if you've got a slight strain here or like a pain in your back or your uh-huh. heart or your, your fingers become quite numb. Um, uh, 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 and then you, you know, you just spiral into a, into a, like an incredibly, also it like it makes your heart beat really, really fast. And then you're like, oh shit, why is my heart beating really fast? It must be the myocardia that I, they gave me when I had COVID. And, the, and the, from the first from the first panic attack, did you already know this is panic attack? No. So the the first, that's sort of why there was, that was the most intense because it was like kind of like five or six panic attacks basically mm-hmm. through like multiple stages of of, uh, of, of the day going through to the... Uh, Every day, five or six? No, no, no. Oh, of uh, the day that it happened, uh, like? going through to the hospital, and then, um, but for really, so long, you for... went to hospital six times? No, no, no. It it was w- one day mm. we went there, but but th- there was sort of five or six panic attacks on the way there, including including one that had me cut me collapsing in the A and E, which so it all me, happening in one day, which ironically got me into the COVID ward, but that time I didn't get it. Uh huh. Um. Yes, all in one day. Wow! But then for the whole the whole time after that, until about a year or a year and a half later, it was basically a ticking, a, a ticking, and it still sort of goes on now, but it doesn't really start to panic anymore. A ticking of like at at some point during the day, something will flick, and I'll have. Like that moment of extreme anxiety, which might be in, become like a panic attack, uh-huh. or might just result in me being hyper aware of my bodily sensations yeah. to the point that that will continue for the whole rest of the day. Wow! And you ruin my day. Mm-hmm. And what's the trigger you realize? Uh, uh, oh, this is panic attack. Who told you? How did you know? I did. Uh, I did two courses of CBT, uh-huh. uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh-huh. One of which worked very well mm-hmm. until in the last session she said, "Oh, by the way, I have to tell you all your symptoms. Symptoms are the same as long COVID." That wasn't very helpful because uh-huh. I was convinced I had long COVID, uh-huh. and I, I still sometimes I'm like, um, "Do I have long COVID?" Um, and <laughs> long COVID is like a female orgasm. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? Um, I mean. It, you mean made up? No. Uh, no. <laughs> it's not made up. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Um, the. Uh, what was I saying? I was talking about the yeah, and then the second time I did it, they again gave me like a really good understanding of sort of the sensate, like the like the looking inwards, like into the back of my brain that was kind of causing me to like only focus on my internal bodily sensations and not my external uh, existence. Mm-hmm. And uh, you, you, you said uh, now you don't have panic attack also anymore? No, I have an almost panic attack every couple of days, mm-hmm. but I still, but I still feel like I could, but I got, a, I got away from the more like depression side of it. Mm-hmm. Thankfully. But thankfully? Th- th- thankfully. Really? Weirdly, weirdly, by. Do you prefer depression? No, 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 no. I know. I mean, I mean, thank- thankfully, I, I got away from the, the depression thing, kind of. Sadly, by accepting that I am now just someone who, you know, 
every couple of days, if I don't sleep enough, and if I have a mm. coffee, and if I have a high element of stress, will have like an extremely uh, unpleasant moment of, ang- of anxiety. What's the number one, like number, how of it, like top three tips you learned uh, from how to um, maintain your, like uh, stay away from panic attacks? From CBT mm-hmm. and stuff? I mean, it's, diff- it's different because it depends on everyone on the, on the, case, the mm. cases. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess, yeah, like from learning what's triggering you, they give, if you look it up, they can give you lots of like really good, good exercises for sort of like, you know, uh, breaking the feedback loop. Mm-hmm. Th- that's the other thing is like understanding how it is a feedback loop. I think mm. I'm quite in a good um, ad- advantageous position. I mean, I just use the word advantageous. Um, I'm in a good position in that, uh, like, one, I, I studied like music and maths and chemistry, so I know what a feedback loop is very intimately. Uh-huh. But also at uni, I took loads of acid. <laughs> acid. Yeah, but when I took acid, I you don't suggest that. I don't. I had a really bad trip, which oh, okay. um, resulted in me uh, seeing. Uh, having like essentially like acid flashbacks for like two years oh fuck and i um but weirdly found that the only way for that to not happen was to not let it bother me Mm -hmm. when it happened and that uh even talking about it now is like making me scared of, of mm. it happening but like, <laughs> it's just something that I'm hallucinating so it's fine uh-huh. um, but having gone through that experience and going on, to- on top of that um, I kind of use that same you know knowledge of you know of the, of the feedback loop and, and look if I don't if I can somehow find a way to not let the like, sort of extreme anxiety and panic like bother me mm-hmm. Then I know that eventually it can kind of diminish and stop happening mm-hmm. because it won't be. I won't be getting anxious about it happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's you know that's difficult, but it's not impossible. Yeah, I feel for lots of mental illness. The other day I was talking with uh, uh, Emily Marco. She is uh, like a character improviser. She has uh, this type of uh, uh, OCD, which uh, comes with an expression that she's extremely afraid of vomiting. Of what? Vomit. Raw meat. Uh, oh, she should not be like a puke. She puke. Should, she should not go on it. Oh, puke. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And uh, and uh, uh, so she's. I was gonna just... say I love raw meat, but I'm not eating puke. Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and we talk about the we, we just. Like, a, for example, OCD has many different uh, expressions. Yeah. Some are like organizing, some are germ phobic, some are like uh, um, puking. So we talk about, the, oh, it feels like it's just, um, and it's for her, it's about control. Yeah. And then I realized it's also really similar to eating disorders, to having control to, and then I just realized, I feel like, it feels like all sorts of mental illness are somehow all connected. It's just different expression, different uh, like uh, versions of it. And uh, in the end, I, I feel like lots of mental illness is really about control. Yeah, like, uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, for example, you talk about uh, uh, like uh, one of the main things you can do is just give out the control until you realize, okay, this will happen. And if I, I I don't focus on how to not have it, then actually it will happen less. Yeah. And um, um, and for me, I think it's uh, I also battle a lot with negative self talk, yeah. yeah. especially when I make mistakes. For example, uh, at day one at the fringe, I was recording the podcast, and the same night I realized I, I lost my mic, and it cost like a hundred and fifty quid. And uh, I was just so upset, and I was like just so angry at myself. Yeah. And uh, then I realized being angry at myself it won't help at it at all. Yeah. 
And uh, uh, the best thing I can do is just uh, forget about it. Because if I live in this uh, state of uh, angry uh, self-hate, uh, it will just uh, impact, like uh, decrease my uh, like uh, happiness, my mood, which will uh, also decrease my uh, my energy level, will decrease the show quality. Yeah. And I can easily lose 150 yeah. by, by having a bad show. Do you, so, do you think that you're, that, that, to what extent do you think that negative voice comes from the influence of other people? So, for example, your parents? Um, yes, and on top of that, I think it's also really, really deep into my childhood. Yeah. I grew up in a broken home. I had no father, and uh, my mother raised me alone. On top of that, every like the only person really like was really loving and really there for my mom is her mom, but she died early. So every person in my family was an asshole. And uh, when we were starving, they would lend us money at a 60% interest rate per year. 60% interest per year. And it's compound interest. Yeah. So, and uh, they are just fucking assholes and nobody helped us. And uh, because of this, she didn't get any help. She was running a sweatshop. I didn't get any attention. And then in school, she sent me to like a really fancy like a school to get the best education. But I was bullied, I was discriminated. Uh, so I didn't have a friend until I was like 15 or so. I'll be a friend. Aww. So, and also it was so discriminatory in that society because just because you don't have father, people just pick on you, yeah. teacher just, just don't treat you fairly. And because I was also an ugly child, I was fat. So like everyone just bullied me and I was so isolated. And the way you grow up in an environment like that, you didn't have feedback, like how to behave around people. Yeah. Uh, because you were just living your mind and the environment back then was so hostile so um, and those those judgment is uh, just went into my head and nobody told me those 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 judgments were wrong because in that society they were right so because of that um, and also and it on one hand it imprinted imprinted those ways inside of me but on the other hand i also didn't have like a and that also made me kind of a weirdo so i i was an outcast everywhere and i had to really try very hard to be normal and but it's just so hard um and that also just reinforced this loop um so i i i think it's uh, yeah childhood but then the childhood make who you are and then which make your adult life also weird because that's all the words I can hear and I, I just don't know how to behave. And uh, um, when I meet someone uh, when the vibes is not right and uh, then I have so many like negative judgment on myself yeah. and it just become worse and worse. But I feel I'm... Um, I'm doing better and another comedian I talked with a few days ago she said always look how far you have come and uh, yeah, I'm not perfect uh, and uh, yeah when for example in this case I was mad at myself for the night but it took less than 12 hours for me to accept it and uh, that's a very very big achievement oh another thing why I was so so mad i think there's another contribute on it is that uh, um we were always poor and especially when i come to europe to study like uh, 13 years ago in order to finance the study we put out everything so we we were like my mom and i were really on the edge of breaking the cash chain which we were like if that happens our life can never get back because uh, if the ca cash chain break, then I can't finish my study, then I don't get the degree, then I can't stay in this country, 
Then I go back to China without a degree. I can never find a good job, and I can never pay back those money we borrowed. So it's like if that happens, our whole life will be ruined. There's no way back. So, and then the business was going really bad in my on my mom's side. So I was just always on the edge of like, uh, we are going. I don't know if we can make it. And also, I wasn't the best student. I, I thought I was stupid. Um, then turns out after I do comedy, I realized I was just in a bad environment. I never found my spark. I never find the right thing to do. And I was permanently in a wrong environment. It's as if I was a cactus and they keep watering me. And they say, why the fuck you don't grow? And it's all your fault, but I'm a cactus. I don't need those water. I just need sunlight. But I didn't know that. So I just always, I, this future is just so uncertain. I didn't know. This is before I have achieved anything. So I didn't know I have this power in me. Yeah. I didn't know I'm a strong person. And uh, it's like every penny counts. Every penny counts. Like for a very long time, I was on uh, like 30, 50 euro a month budget. And when, if you lose something valuable, it's just, it's just fear. Like, why do you do this? Yeah. Because you don't have much and you can't lose anything. And now I'm more forgivable. It's also because I have money on my account. And this 100 quid is a lot. 150 quid is a lot. But uh, it won't make me starving. It won't make me possibly break the cash check. And uh, I think um, lots of people don't talk about it. But poverty really, really takes a toll on the mental and physical health. Yeah. Because you are always tense. You can never relax. Yeah, uh, 100%. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Uh huh. And I think that's it. Yeah. That's it's, the... it's, it's no coincidence that I got a lot better when the pandemic was over and things were you yeah. know, financially a bit more stable. I, cha I changed jobs to where I'm working now and uh, mm. my wife could start a business again. Mm -hmm. And, like, of course I'm going to get better, you know, when that happens. So, yeah. yeah. It's it's the one of the main things. I yeah, yeah. You know, we all and, have a duty to try and. And Dylan, I'm Dylan. I'm so impressed by the the fact you can admit your privilege. <laughs> really, really, like uh, by talking with you, I also realized you are not like from like insanely rich family. You also had your struggle, but for me, what's like pissing me again and again is like I see people, like. Uh, like two meters tall white man with a PhD degree from a family where like generations of professors. Yeah. And uh, then they tell you they never had a privilege and they feel they are discriminated because if they find a job and they are equally good with another female and the employer will always pick the female. If they are equal, they are the same. And I was like, seriously? <laughs> like for thousands, thousands of years, like you and the woman is here, you are here, you get it. And for the first time in history, when you are equal, they get the woman, you think it's unfair? Yeah. And uh, so I just feel so, so proud of you. <laughs> and uh, oh. maybe you are a pussy, maybe you are weak, maybe you are not as strong as your wife, but at least you are honest and you admit your weakness <laughs> and uh, your privilege and i'm proud of you 100 yeah, yeah 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 cool 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 that's the podcast and uh, say one sentence if you want to say to the audience um i mean thanks so much for, for listening and, and watching maybe i don't know oh. but uh yeah this has been i think it's at the end of the day it's always good to talk and mm -hmm. i feel like this has been good for me and hopefully good for you and hopefully yeah. good for you uh, yeah bye bye stay safe don't make children don't be stupid <laughs> Like him. <laughs> bye bye. Oh no, I almost deleted.